Afternoon folks, I hope you are well. Um, I did a, a box opening a bit earlier on, I haven't uploaded it as yet, I haven't decided if I'm going to yet or not. But in the process, I was going through my cellar and I picked out two boxes, two tins of Latakia Brebia um, Flake number 9. Uh, sorry, Brebia Latakia Flake number 9. Uh, so these are the sort of the last bits of Syrian Latakia that you were able to buy. It was kind of under the radar, under the radar for a while. So when Syrian Latakia was going out of uh, fashion, so to speak, uh, when it disappeared due to the troubles in Syria, um, if you remember, McBaron's HH Vintage Syrian went out of stock very fast. Um, there was a run on it, much like when McClelland announced they were closing. There was a run on McClelland tobaccos, so the Vintage Syrian went very quickly. But this is, was not such a well-known tobacco and it was kind of flying under the radar and you could buy this for quite some time after Syrian Latakia disappeared um, so you can see here it says here a good portion of Syrian Latakia um, now made I believe with Cyprian Latakia I don't know how to tell the difference between these in terms of age this one is <coughs> excuse me 2010 this one has a code a sticker on there but it may not be an age code um, so I don't really know which one to go for to be honest Um, but I want to um, I want to do a first impressions. Now I know that the 2010 one is going to be really smooth. It's going to going to be mellowed. The Latakia with age will mellow. Um, I actually like that. Um, I like a smooth, sweet, rich, but velvety smooth, musty kind of Latakia as opposed to really in your face, campfirey, smoky, acidic, acrid kind of. Um, Latakia, which some people do like. Uh, so for me, an aged Latakia is definitely a bonus. Um, now, which one to bust open? The thing is, if I go for the 2010 and I love it, and I try to go for that one, it may not be as nice because that one's older. But, um, sorry about that little disturbance. Anyway, I've decided you only live once. So we're going to crack open the 2010. Let's find something to open it with. My hands are a little bit black from yesterday's work on a dark overnight stem, so excuse that, please. Mm -hmm. The aroma is actually quite campfire. The paper is nice and dark, which is a good thing. Very crumbly. So it's really, really dark. And in terms of flakes, it reminds me a bit of Penzance in terms of the presentation. It's all literally very crumbly, falling apart. Um, it's a lot, there's a lot of glistening sugar on there. It's got quite a deep aroma, but also um, earthy, mulchy, as you'd expect, that fermented kind of aroma that you get. Um, what you can see here... Although it's all dark, but you can see the lighter areas and really black lines in there. So that's more, it really actually does remind me a lot of um, the uh, Penzance, or even a little bit like Special Atakia Flake in terms of how streaky it is. Um, Special Atakia Flake, the Virginias are brighter usually, the more of a, uh, a much more of a beige colour. But this is obviously because of the age, it's gotten a lot darker. I don't know what it's like when it's fresh but um, it reminds me a lot of the presentation of Penzance so we're just gonna take a bit from the middle this is not moist at all it's ready to to smoke pretty much it's very crumbly, you don't want to rub it out too much, just a little bit of teasing and that's good to go. There we go. Alright, I'm just trying to put it down my duck. 
can take a decent picture of it. Right, now, a pipe. Um, the pipe that I've been using most um, recently um, has been my Fabrizio Natalizia, uh, which is one of my Latakia pipes. This is a, a commissioned pipe that I ordered a good few years ago now, very early on, one of my first commissions. Um, with a Cumberland stem, and that's a zinc or something like that, just a metal band, with a, basically a bent apple. And um, one of my first um, apple-shaped pipes, bent apple shape certainly, um, and that was way before it became a favourite shape of mine. Um, I've said this before. I've mentioned it many, many times. The reason why I got the reason why I got this shape it was actually based on a pipe that um, uh, Glenn had. Drop Bear Woodworks. Um, he had one ordered from uh, is it JD Smoking Pipes? Don't see him much these days. Um, Jim Duchesne. Um, he had one done, but um, the grain on that was phenomenal. It was a stunning looking pipe. And I sent pictures off to Fabrizio too to do that, and he made me this one. Much darker stain, not quite the same as um, the one that uh, Glenn has, but of course you would never expect to get one exactly the same. Um, this uh, pipe actually sat on my shelf or in a drawer for quite some time. I mean, I, smoked it, I smoked it in the beginning, but it just never really resonated with me. I even offered it up. I offered it up a few times for sale in, in one of my YouTube sales, and one or two of them. Um, thankfully, it never sold because it has since become a favourite, one of my favourite Latakia pipes, which just shows how things go. I remember one of the first times I did a, a pipe sale. One of my um, good friends on uh, YouTube channel, who actually doesn't, he's not active anymore, but a nice guy here in the UK. Uh, he actually said to me, really, really think hard about it because you sell your pipes, you get rid of your pipes, further down the line you might regret it and you might want them back. And that's a, that's a fair comment. For the most part, it hasn't really been an issue for me. Because I've gotten to a stage, which again is something I've spoken about before, where I can remember the pipes that I've had and remember the you know what it was like and kind of enjoy the fact that I once owned it. I don't have to have it now anymore with most of my pipes. There, 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 there are the odd few that I would like to have back again, but not many. Making my own pipes really makes a big difference as well, because I'm really enjoying smoking my own pipes, um, and that's what I smoke most of the time. So it kind of helps not missing other pipes because I'm happy with what I have. Here we go. This is my first ever tamper that I bought, a little brass tamper I bought, I think I paid £11 for it or £10 or maybe even less, I don't recall exactly, but it has remained with me. So the flavours that you, get, that you get here, I mean, I have to smoke it more, but it's not the classical mixture that you would the, the flavours that you'd get from a Latakia mixture. It's more of a Virginia Latakia. And 
and the quality of this kind of smoke is always going to be in the quality of the Latakia. In what style of Latakia it is and whether you like that. It's quite full. Spicy, it's rich. It's pretty full, like I said. I don't know what the nicotine strength is going to be like, we'll find out. But thankfully it's not the, the really heavy, acrid, campfire type of Latakia. I would say it's somewhere in between the Latakia style of special Latakia flick, which I consider to be a very refined Latakia. somewhere in between that and the really heavy going acrid, bitter, acidic um, Latakias. Sweetness level. It's there but it's not very prominent. Again, somewhere in between something like, say, Penzance or 1820 Flake, that kind of thing, which is also very spicy and aromatic, if you like, but there was a distinct sweetness there. And somewhere between that and a more savoury uh, Latakia. I don't smoke them so much, so I'm not giving you, an exa giving you examples because I don't really smoke the, the heavier ones. Um, the type of Latakias that I smoke are the ones that I'm naming, like. Uh, special Athakia Flake, 1820 Flake, um, some uh, Blue Mountain or uh, whatever it's called now, or whatever it was called in its last iteration, uh, Balkan Blue from McClelland, very smooth, very rounded. I'm not adding Northwoods into it because Northwoods I think is more of a, there's more in there I think. These are more, the ones that I'm talking about are more pure um, Virginia Periques, uh, sorry, La, uh, Virginia Latakias. Some of them will have a bit of Orientals in them and maybe a bit of Perique, but generally speaking, the ones that I've mentioned are predominantly Virginia Latakia. To some extent, Seattle Pipe Club's plum pudding as well. I don't include the Mississippi River in there simply because, try as I might, I've, I've yet to really get my head around it. Um, I've tried it many times in terms of just to understand the type of blend that it is, but I could never produce a reasonable amount of flavor um, in a bowl smoking Mississippi River. I don't know why. It was just a very vague smoke. There's a little bit of, of a, a vegetable kind of a herby tea kind of tea essence kind of thing like you'd get in Penzance or 1820 Flake. It's, there's a little bit of that there, not much but a bit. well balanced even though it's full it's well balanced 
There isn't any, any rough edge really sort of disturbing the smoke. It's well balanced but not necessarily harmonious. It's not necessarily melding into a really uh, smooth, consistent flavour which makes sense, it, if that makes sense. <laughs> It's obviously my first smoke. I haven't smoked this in years. Um, I think I've smoked it right at the beginning of my journey. But I would have no recollection of it. Hmm, getting a little bit of a gurgle, which I don't usually get on this pipe. If you do get gurgle on a pipe, the way to deal with it temporarily at least, if you're not smoking a filtered pipe, then obviously a pipe cleaner. But if you're smoking a filtered pipe, which you can't do that, is cup your hand flat over the top of the bowl, so you're sealing it, hold it up like that, and a quick, sharp downward movement. And what that will do is gather all the moisture, and it will stop it gurgling, at least for a while. Well, I'm going to continue smoking and see if I can add any thoughts of any value at all. All right, I'm back. I've smoked through most of the bowl. And um, once, I, once the bowl got going, it really uh, behaved very, very well. Uh, didn't need too many relights. Once it's uh, stoked up, it's fine. Produces lots of smoke, but um, I have to say that the second half of the smoke has been much, much richer. Um, it is, I wouldn't call it a complex blend, um, because it's not a mixture as such, it's Virginia and Latakia, that's it. But it does produce a very rich flavor. It's quite um, spicy which I wouldn't have expected um, with a Virginia Latakia. And it does have that green tea, herby kind of flavor going on. Um, but it won't replace any of my current go-to uh, Latakia blends. Apologies. Um, yeah, so essentially it's it's really not going to replace any of my existing favorite Latakia blends. For my particular palette, it doesn't approach special Latakia flake. It's a little bit too punchy for me for that. Um, I prefer more mellow, more refined easy going, smoother Latakia blends, like the ones I mentioned earlier on. Um, so it's nice, it's not what stands, what's what I would typically um, remember as Syrian Latakia, for me this is actually closer to what I call, what I would remember of Cyprian Latakia, a little bit harsher, a little bit more robust. To my mind, Syrian is a little bit smoother, a little bit sweeter. Um, whilst it's not up there, you know, with the heaviest Latakia blends, it is quite a full um, Latakia blend. So if you like a, a full-on Latakia smoke, this uh, could be really nice for you. I thought it would be smoother, I must be honest, given the age. I'll jar it up and maybe things will change once it's jarred up, once it's had some air time. I might 
might uh, send some around to people to try as well. But if I had to choose between this and any of my other ones, like um, Special Athekia Flake, 1820 Flake, even Northwards, which I wouldn't compare to this, I would take any of those over this. So that's just my personal preference, I guess. So there we go. Brebia number 9 Flake. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you on the next one.